And we are back. We tried to kick Jeff off in that uh, very quick transition, but he said, no, I want to answer some questions. Not so done. without further ado, let us answer some questions. Here we go. Question number one. They told me I have to hold a sec. Uh -huh. I'm ready. They're all crying in the, in the, in the, in the control. They're, they're all in tears. Very emotional. <laughs> sad. It's a very sad day for them all. I think you got very emotional. Um, you are a big part of the show, and people people really care about you. Mm -hmm. The uh, we, By the way, we didn't talk about it, but we will. Uh, I think someone's going to ask me about Fedor, but we didn't get to Bellator 198 this, this Saturday. Fedor versus Mir. Scale of 1 to 10, level of interest in this fight? 5. Yeah, I would just put it right in the middle. Yeah, 5. Yeah. That low? Luke? It would have been so higher. I, would, I don't say five disparagingly, you know. Okay. Maybe a six sounds, I mean, six, I guess, something wow. like that. I'm looking, I'm, looking, I'm, looking for, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to Same it Same here. Well. Yeah. I mean, it's just that Mir's been out. I mean, it's just one of those things you're, you're looking at it like maybe five or ten years beyond where, you know, yeah. it had its true compelling moment. But, yeah, I mean, they're, they're both legends, man, you know. Yeah, I'll raise my expectation a little bit because the guy who wins gets to move on and, and hopefully we'll have, uh, you know, added to the resume a little bit with something important. Who but I would have been get? more enthusiastic if this fight, if this had taken place in 2004, sure, yeah. I would have been more into who, it. Who does the winner win? Chael. Oh, Chael, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of fun to know, actually, because then you're like, okay, then you well, can... Chael versus yeah. Fedor would be very fun. That would be. Uh, I'm just as interested, by the way, in the debut of Dylan Dennis because that's the most interesting thing. Yeah, on the card. I, I'm yeah. not really quite yeah. sure, especially how good Gary Tonin looked. Um, I feel like the bar has been just raised. Hope there. There's no confrontations with Dennis and uh, no, no. <laughs> and him, Hunter. No, Tonin. No. No? no, no, just just. You making a joke that just died on the way out? Yeah, <laughs> I was only thinking of Connor showing up again. Uh, oh no. Yeah. Uh, John Cavanaugh will be in his corner, but I don't know if Connor's going to be there. Okay, I think we're ready now. What do we got? Question number one, who would be the first champ of the 165 pound division in the UFC? So this is a very, you know, this is a, is a very broad question, but I, I wanted to know if mm. you guys are in favor in light of Kevin Lee, is it time that they finally introduced that 165 pound division or is it not necessary? When you talk about 155 <laughs> being so stacked and the players who could go up to 165, I think of, you know, Kevin Lee, maybe a Nate Diaz, maybe an Eddie Alvarez, maybe a Jorge Masvidal. There's a lot of guys who I think would benefit. Is it time to do it? Is it, do we presume then there's a 175? That's the I leap? I think you'd have to do yeah, that. Yeah, because you couldn't have two divisions that right? close. Right, right. I think you'd have to do that, right? I think it would make sense, sure. I mean, mean, you go 10 pound, you know, 10 pounds between the divisions, why not? GSP probably. GSP, that's yeah. a good one. I, yes. I'll, I'll go with the guy who, uh, who has who has two belts and would, and would love to have a, have a third one, McGregor. You think McGregor would be in that first well, title fight? Yeah, you know, because he, he wants sure. he always wants these kind of like historical things going on. That he does, he I don't think he would be as interested in challenge in uh, you know in fighting. Well, he would be interested in the other fights too, of course. Sure. But but I think this would be kind of a another feather in his cap if he could win it. GSP is a good answer. GSP really? Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's going to go from 185 to 165. He could if he wanted to. Yeah, you know, I, I know, but he's very concerned about the fluctuation. Kick everybody's ass along the way. You know? Are you in favor of 165? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, then... Uh, Any weight class point. created as a mechanism for alleviating weight cut failures will have that as its only and strict virtue. Okay. So just keep that in mind. You want to create a weight class to give guys relief? Well, that's yeah. what its going, its value is going to be. All right. <laughs> what else do we have? Let's move along to the next one here. Who is your favorite fighter with their own name tattooed on themselves? <laughs> Wow. Gaethje is pretty impressive. Cerrone has his name, a big tribal piece, and a tattoo of his dog on his back. Amazing. I was trying to think of... So, blessed. I mean, it has, like, the blessed yeah. thing on it. Yeah. That I think that that, that, counts, that right? works, right? Yeah. Yeah. Who else has their... I'm trying to think who else even has that. Uh, does McGregor does, have Notorious on his stomach? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Does Johnny Cash fight in the UFC anymore? Oh, man. Oh, you <laughs> mean Alan, Alan Belcher? <laughs> <laughs> Worst tattoo in UFC history? <laughs> it, probably, it, could, it could be Johnny Cash. Boy, there's been some bad ones, though. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's a bad one. Um, remember Darren Till? Everyone thought he had Paige Van Zandt tattooed on his arm. Yeah, that's a bad one. No, the uh, the worst one has to be the uh, Joe Riggs NHB. Uh, yeah. On the arm. Didn't someone get a, a cage on their back? Yes, that's the one I was thinking uh, of too. Someone, I, I don't remember the who locals. That is. A lot of guys have a little bit of fence. I think yeah. even uh, Abel Trujillo has um, a fence. Um, <laughs> is it offensive? <laughs> Get out. <laughs> the, tri <laughs> Get out. The, the, the tribal ones are always unfortunate. You know, like the like the barbed wire. I don't know. Oh my God. What do you call those ones? The ones. Look, look I, as a guy who's got several tattoos, I can tell you. You do. Yeah. I didn't know that. Uh, 
Really? Yeah. Let's see. Uh, any got, UFC ones? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, all, all UFC ones. <laughs> Are there any places we'll get Lou us Thomas Thomas right across this no. chest? Show us something. I've got one, one here. Like... i got one across my back. I've got one across my stomach. i got one you on do. my ribs. Yeah. I would have never known You're that. like Kevin Durant. You keep them all uh, covered up. John Wall to an extent, too. I actually, so the thing on the back thing is kind of funny. I do not have my name written on my back, but my mother is deceased, of course. And uh, so uh, my family is basically, on the, on my, uh, my mom was a Armenian refugee that grew up in Syria and then ultimately in Lebanon. And um, they didn't have any boys throughout most of the family, so that's how the family is now gone. And uh, so I got the family name, which is okay. not my name, but I got the family name written on my back. Okay. So I do have that. But I feel, oh. I feel pretty proud about that. One so. cool one, I guess, it's not really the name. Yeah. But he does have Showtime on it, right? Like Pettis, he has a Showtime yeah, in the back. But he also has, like, a, him and his brother both have an homage to their mom. Yeah. That's kind of yeah. cool. Uh, dad. Oh, dad, yeah, yeah. Dad, no, but he's got two portraits. Yeah, yeah he does. You're so right, is one right. the child I he has? I think one is, one is Something uh, like this yeah. child. Uh, Jorge Rivera also got uh, right. his daughter who passed right. away. So, I mean, the, we've, we've turned this for, into a negative, into a positive, which I guess <laughs> is, a, is a nice thing. But, uh, yeah, I guess those come to mind. Uh, Cerrone is, is a pretty famous one. Um, what, what does Cub Swanson have on his stomach? Does he have something? Like oh, SoCal. So the trees. Right, yeah. That's actually yeah. pretty cool. The tree is pretty cool. I mean, I'm not a big tattoo guy. Look, look most tattoos are terrible. Very, yeah. you have to, to get a good tattoo, takes a lot of time and a lot of money and a good eye and 99% of people who have tattoos. Our brand have his and name sobriety. And sobriety. He's got some cool ones. I don't yeah. know if he has his name, but the neck is pretty bad. Oh, TJ Dillashaw has a really good um, a forearm half okay. sleeve. Where they've got like all this like Salvador Dali type art. Really? But yeah, it's like it's it's really really cool. Did really you know cool. that you if you are Jewish you cannot be buried in a Jewish cemetery if you have a tattoo? Wow, I've heard that. Did you know that? Yeah. Mm -mm. So that kind of rules me out. <laughs> blum, blum. All right, let's uh, move along to the next <laughs> one. On I know, yeah. Jesus. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't understand. Die. It's not the top guys in the world right now. But if Fedor wins the tournament, does that cement his greatest heavyweight legacy? No, oh, it's already cemented, isn't it? I mean, all of this stuff is just gravy yeah. to the, to, at this point. But I mean, honestly, if he went on to win this tournament, I think that would be like the whole thing and just has this last glory moment. That would be pretty cool for him. It would be it? cool, but I think it does nothing for his legacy. No, it doesn't. It like really wouldn't. If he wouldn't. beats Chael and uh, King Mo, like what, what does that really do? I don't know. If he beat Ryan Bader? Yeah, I was going to say. Or yeah, even Mid Mitrione. I mean, I don't see that as particularly right. likely, but yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, no, to me, it would make him like the, so you see all these black belts in jiu-jitsu, yeah. and they win the, the tournaments, and then they go on and they graduate to, like, the world's masters, which is still, you get tough guys in those tournaments, man. Believe me, you get some really good ones. He's like, he, that's what he would be. He'd be, like, the masters MMA champ for me. All right, fair enough. He'd have to move yeah. on from that to sign with the UFC and beat Stipe Miocic. That would, then, that would cement his legacy. It, it, do you guys, th <laughs> that's not happening. <laughs> do, do you guys, I almost feel like this is the beginning of the tournament. Like, Chael versus Rampage yeah. do not feel like a heavyweight fight. Mitro and Nelson, we saw, and I know they're true, but, like, this is the most heavyweight Grand Prix-ish type of fight thus far. It's only the third one, of course, but it feels, like, this one feels a little more special. Yeah, it's also, we have a mystic sports hero. We don't, we haven't had that yeah. yet. This is a, I mean, whatever you could say about Fedor's most recent career, people who have, who have, who might judge him based upon the last X years, that, you know, it's crazy. We have to, you have to go back a long way to see, you know, a 10-year unbeaten streak and all that kind of stuff. Um, but he's still that guy. He's still walking down that ramp with that, that music that just makes your, all your, your bones just, like, you know, shake. That, that uh, great music that, uh, I don't even know what it's called. You know, yeah. that, that Russian music yeah, that he plays? Yeah, tremendous. That just, I mean, it just creates an entire different ambiance in a sports arena that yeah. very few people can, can create. So and nobody in this tournament has done that yet. Were you guys shows when he was yep, fighting? Yep. You, were you there? Yeah, I, was I mean, freshman. I remember that atmosphere. That's Southern California, which is a lot yep. of times can be um, not as passionate. But it, I just remember him coming out. That was the first time I got to see him live, and I just remember thinking, like, this is it's just on a different level of yep. the kind of reverence that people have for him. You you, you think it's still? I think it's up? a big deal. But like, do you I think always this I, draw a big number. They I don't needed know about to, drawing right? a big note. Uh, I think they do need that, but I mean, I don't know what it'll end up doing. I, after the last, after that last ratings, I don't, I don't even know at this point. And how, how his last fight went too? I mean, he, he was locked out in. That's what 90 I'm trying to say. That, nowadays, you tune in, you're, you don't want to be sad by his performance, and I feel like that's why I felt him going in that Mitrione fight, and unfortunately, it didn't unfold. So I feel like I'm still in that same space. You're just like, ah, oh. it's more like. You don't want him to tarnish too deeply the legacy yeah. he set. You know what I mean? At this point, there's something about Fedor though, and watching him fight. Like he has these bursts of energy. It's 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 
it's mesmerizing watching him still to this day because yeah. he's either getting brutally knocked out or he's coming, you know, 100 miles an hour. It's never boring with him. Even yeah. even that Maldonado fight, which was kind of hard oh to watch God, at the time, yeah. it wasn't boring, you know? It's, no. th there's always action. So I'm looking forward to it. And then, yeah. oh, by the way, I'm curious to see how Frank Muir looks. I mean, yeah, he's an important true. part of this equation as well. He has not fought in two years. He lost a crap load of weight, right? Literally. Um, I mean, like 100 pounds, it yeah. seems. I think he's being a little... Uh, He's being a little kind when he says he was weighing just over 300 in those initial photos in January, but I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, where's he at now? Uh, he Wait, said he said around uh, in the two in the in the high 240s. Okay, if mm -hmm. memory serves oh. me correct. Um, okay, let's move along to the next one. Rate UFC 224 on a scale of one to <sighs> ten. So this is the one that's headlined by. Uh, Raquel Pennington versus Amanda Nunes. 225 and 226. Yeah, those are bangers. Those that's, are just That's incredible. why this one yes. fails in comparison. So you're like, all right, on its own merit, you have to kind Can of... Can you read us who's I will read it to you. I, I, I had it uh, queued up. Because also Covington and... Was supposed, uh, to, be was on supposed to be on it. And then they moved there. That would have made it a little bit higher in my judgment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this one only has... Um, it only has one uh, title fight, which, of course, is Raquel Pennington versus Amanda Nunes for the women's bantamweight title. Um, Jacare Souza versus Kelvin Gaslam. Great fight, Mackenzie yeah. Dern versus Amanda Cooper, yep. John Lineker versus Brian Kelleher, Vitor Belfort versus Leonardo Machida. That's the pay-per-view. That's okay. That's good. It's, it's that's good. For, for a that's real pay-per-view? I, I want to watch all of them. Yeah. yeah. Right. For a real pay-per-view, that's, that's not bad that, at that all. That does not, ever, oh, does not always happen well, with They should have put Mackenzie Dern on the contender series. Wah, wah. Well, <laughs> Here we go. They had her. They were paying her to be on <laughs> no, LFA. I know. I'm just, almost I'm teasing. I'm but um, <laughs> it's not 225. It's not 226. Yeah, not much is, frankly. Yes, but this is a good card. It's not bad. I can't be too distracted. Won't do well on pay-per-view, though. No. Well, the first of all, it's going to be in Brazil, which means yeah. it's going to be hard to promote. Yeah. And, of course, you got, you know, they they have always... They, there's an ongoing story to be told about how poorly Amanda Nunes has been um, promoted ever yeah. since the Ronda Rousey win. How did you get no rub from that? Yeah. Especially right. in the way that you absolutely demolished And her. UFC 200, right? Yeah. And yeah. UFC 200. Yeah. I mean, they did a really poor job with that. Pay-per-views are, are top-heavy. I mean, people really want to... They care about that big main event fight and everything that comes before it. I mean, this one had the, the one through four on the... On the uh, you know, pre-main event, all the rest of that main card, they're all really good fights, really interesting fights. That they're, at least they're going to tell us something. But I don't know. I mean, I, I think that when you have a card like that, the you know, it's it's that main event, and and there's um, uh, the people think that that Raquel Pennington is going to give um, Nunes the kind of challenge that she has has seen before. I don't know. It's going to be it's going to be a tough. <coughs> it's be a tough I, I will sell. say this: if if you compare it to last year, um, and they've had really bad luck this year. Uh, so, so you had 221 main event change, 222 main event change, mm -hmm. um, 223, of course, main event change. So they've had three straight pay-per-views where the main event has changed. But if you compare, like, this summer's slate to last summer, remember 213 was super weak. You had Nunes, um, you know, fighting Shevchenko in the main event of the July, you know, July 4th card. Now you're getting Miocic mm -hmm. and Cormier and also right. Ortega versus Holloway. Uh, you also had the 215 card, which was super weak as well, uh, DJ Borg. And, um, well, that fell through, but that was the original. Yeah. And then, of course, the Nunes-Shevchenko fight, which didn't come to fruition at 213. 216 was super weak as well. They had to create the interim title. Mm -hmm. but, but you're getting, you know, the, the, this summer, you're getting, you know, the Chicago card that we talked about, the July uh, 8th card. This card, I think, is, is solid, maybe even better than the Rio pay-per-view last year that had Holloway Aldo, but not much else under it. Um, and then you're getting that August 4th card, which, uh, as of right now, has Dillashaw versus Garbrandt. I understand they would like to put uh, DJ versus Sahu on that card as well. Throwing a Nate Diaz fight, I think you got something there. Mm -hmm. So I will say the 224, just from our perspective, is a really fun matchmaking card. Like you think about those matches, good they're matchups. all very good. Yeah. You know, Gastelum and Jack Jacare and things, you know. That's an important yeah, fight. Yeah, all those fights, and even the, the little legends fight to kick it off with uh, with Belfort and Machida. I mean, those are the types of matchmaking you'd expect from there. Certainly would give the uh, the home crowd uh, the, the crowd of Brazil, a, a bit of a, a yeah. boost having some of those legendary fighters yeah. from, from that place um, on the card. This could be Beaufort's last fight. We say yeah. that every time. Yeah, <laughs> is a 10th to last fight. Okay, let's move along to our next one. What happens with UFC Chile? God. Why UFC no remove <laughs> the uh, face of Santiago Ponzinibbio from the promotion of the event? So I'm told that they're pretty close on this one, that, that, that Usman is going to remain on the card. Um, and, and they're pretty close to finding a replacement. The real question that I, that I want to ask you guys is, does it bother you when it's very clear that a guy is out of a headliner, tickets are on sale, 
and yet they make no mention of it and they leave him. Now, Ponzinibbio, you can make the case, is the draw here because he's the guy from Argentina. Mm -hmm. There's a reason they're putting him on that card. And they don't remove him from the website. They don't make an announcement. It reminds me to a degree, I know it's different, but if a big star, if LeBron James wasn't playing in game, uh, what, what is it going to be, six or something like that, like this this news gets out and is and is made official by, you know, the club, the NBA, et cetera. And they always do, like, w when Holloway was out of the Edgar fight, this thing lingered for a week and they make no mention. Is it dishonest not to update the website, not to, to make some kind of correction when tickets are on sale? There could be someone who's a casual fan, but knows about Ponce and Ibio, is like, ah, oh, look at this card. I'm going to go buy it. There's no mention and of travel. it whatsoever. Yeah. It's just, I mean, the, the people who just know that they're just a countryman, they want to travel and they want to go check this out. I mean, you know, if you just don't, if you don't know, or if you, you know what I mean? Like, right. you're, it's just all of that. Yes, to, it is. It's like, <clears throat> It's like anything else. As soon as as soon as something's definitively out, like you know, we've seen this a million times. That that needs to go. It just has to go because otherwise, at that point, you're advertising something that's false. Just you know? make it TBD. You know, I, mean, I put think that, yeah, that I think that they there. just love to um, they love to change one thing to another. But they but the there has to be that other. I mean, when when uh, Nomagameda versus Ferguson became Nomagameda versus Holloway, instantly we were seeing you know promotional yeah. materials for that fight. But right now it is. You know, TBD doesn't have like a Wikipedia page. TBD <laughs> does not look very pretty in a picture. TBD is looks like. Why would someone want to buy f buy tickets to see TBD fight? Sort of the, in the interesting aspect to me is you're only able to get away with that with an event that is small enough in scale. Like in other words, if you had a McGregor fight and McGregor got injured and you and whoever yeah, else reported yeah. it, you, the UFC can announce or not announce what they want. It would take over the universe of sports news. But they wouldn't update it. They, they still wouldn't, but it would almost be irrelevant because yeah. uh, it, everyone they would, would know. It would be in the public consciousness. Mm. With this one, it's like, hey, the UFC's coming to town <laughs> in uh, Santiago, and Chile, yeah. and uh, but you right. can you can lose half your headliner, and maybe the locals know. I don't know. But I'm just saying it's not big enough to really make the waves so they can just kind of skate by without doing it. So it tell, tells the you what the size. Too? They lost Shogun versus yeah. Ozdemir, which they've already put on right. another card. Yeah, yeah, right, to right. sell to sell those tickets. I don't know if that part has been updated. Gun to your head, do you, do you guys have a choice to fight Usman? Oh, Oof. no, I don't care. I mean, okay. you know, the poor, poor guy. I just want to see him on the card. <coughs> really, yeah. you know, at this Same point. Here. Like he's ready to make that leap, and yeah. so you want to be able to, you want to see it. It kind there's of not, sucks. There's not many fight. options. Yeah, this I mean, fight, the, the, the fight 10. he had was perfect, so it kind of sucks, you know. Yeah, and <laughs> I'd like to see him fight Damian Maya. Yeah, I've heard that one mentioned a lot. Be interesting. I think he'd piece him up on the feet, personally. Yeah, but it's a nice. It's an interesting. Yeah, it's, it, take, it takes away his uh, safety valve. Let's move along to our next question. What else do we have? Michael Chandler told MMA Junkie that his Bellator contract is close to being up. Do you see the UFC making a massive offer to sign him um, or not with a stacked lightweight division? If they offered him a deal, do you believe he would come over? What do you guys think? Man. You know, out of all the loyalists for yeah. Bellator, I feel like he's the number one guy. I mean, he's just been their, their face. And that doesn't mean he wouldn't be a businessman ahead of it all, but I'm like, he has been their face and he's been very loyal to them the whole way. I'd be really surprised if Bellator didn't offer him something to keep him that way. Like deep you know, down, he probably wants to see what it's like over there. No, I I would think so. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, you have to imagine all the times Michael Chandler has been in an interview where someone asked him, "What would it be like exactly. to fight in the UFC?" And every time he handles it like a pro. Yeah, yeah. Right. every time he has done this for years for them. So you would have to imagine they would be. I would hope be appreciative of that fact and also recognize while his last event didn't necessarily do all that much in the ratings. He has been a valuable component to the organization, not merely as a champion, but as somebody who you could put and do that kind of media and be that kind of face and um, and, and, and be a high caliber talent as well that you can parade. So uh, I do think he would want to go to the UFC, yeah. and I do think if they made him an offer, he would. That was good enough. But my How do you think he does? I does think he hang with I the top guys? I think he's guys? very competitive, yes. Does he do better than Gaethje? Probably similar. So, so somewhere somewhere that all those guys, once you get to like between yeah. three and better seven. Than Will Brooks? Yeah, oh yeah. Um, There's no Bill Brooks beat him. That, that's MMA math, MMA man. Math. You know. Yeah. Here's why I think he would want to. Even in talking to him, maybe in January, or February, before his uh, before his January fight, or whenever yeah. he first fought at the beginning of the year, he was mentioning he was no longer that interested in even the belt. He was no longer interested. In, he wanted fights that were like even welterweight, like fighting yep. guys like Roy McDonald. It's almost as if he at this point he's he's thinking in those terms. I want bigger fights. I want to fight the guys people say that I can't beat. 
Well, where is he going to find that? You know, he's not, he's going to have very limited uh, selections over in Bellator at this point. But if he if he were to consider the UFC, you, we just were talking earlier about their lightweight division. You can mix and match any of those in their big fights. You know what I'm saying? And they would be the kind of fights where the partition is down and it becomes right. fun because you're like, wow, I never thought we'd see this fight. I'm really, and unlike, unlike Will Brooks, he's not a disgruntled Bellator guy. So the UFC would have to make an offer that would <laughs> that be more compelling. Than the belt than whatever belt were offered him, and I, it wouldn't necessarily have to be more money, but it would certainly it couldn't be a lot less. I wonder um, what what these last ratings um, <laughs> will do in terms of his negotiation power. Like, will this be held against him? It wasn't the original fight. Brandon Gertz, you know, doesn't offer much star power. Does Brent Primus? No, but at least it was a title <laughs> fight, and at least it was you know a rematch that had some juice behind it. You know the history. Um, does Bellator say like, eh, yes. you know? Maybe you're, I don't know, uh, but it's not a good, if you are Bellator approaching free agency. Big time steam. Not, Last not, year not we talked about Bellator, it was almost like we, they were on the uptick, you know, and, oh, like, and now it's like. It's crazy what's happened this yeah. far. I also think, I mean, blaming that one on Michael Chandler. No. I mean, but I'm, not, I'm not saying you are. They probably will be quick to blame it on him. They, in they might try, that would be very dishonest. Yeah. 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 Um, all right, let's move along to our next one. Just a few more left here. Uh, if I'm right, it's been a while since someone has lost after coming in overweight for a fight. You are correct. Do you think 20% of the purse is enough? Sure. Do you feel when 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 you see someone, you know, I think I think I think it might be like six and zero in twenty eighteen, but I could be wrong. It's, it's definitely at least five. Okay, it's at least five. You you, you talk to the layman and mm -hmm. you're and you're like, you have two fighters. What does one pound do? But there is it's it's more than that, right? You pull the plug on something early, like Aspen Ladd weighed right. in at nine a.m. Right, right. She's right. still two hours. Right. There's something to right. that last pound and what you do to your body en route to a fight, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, although uh, that's not what Kevin Lee was in, the situation that he was no, in. No, he was at the buzzer. And so to me, it's like... And he might have gotten those two hours at a different state, right? That's right. The crazy thing he would have yeah. had the week, week yeah. before had been in Arizona. So, so to me, it's like, look, number one, here's what you can say, no matter who you are. It's just not professional. you got to be a professional make weight. I don't care what state you're in, yeah. what weight class. You sign the deal, make the deal. So number yeah. one, it's that. Number two, the extra pound, 157 versus 156... In this particular case, as they mark to the octagon, I'd be surprised if there was a significant weight differential between them. And in any case, it has nothing to do with that fight outcome. That was skill differential almost the entire yeah. way. If you want to make an argument that had he been forced to shed the, the extra pound, would that have sufficiently drained him? It's all speculation. I don't know. I think the bigger issue was when someone like a John Dodson, who was a flyweight, Competing at bantamweight gets a Pedro Munoz <laughs> who makes 140 halfway to the next weight class, yeah. two weight classes up. That's when it's absurd. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But for the one pound in this particular case, it's not a big deal. I, mean, I do think that it, it is more than speculation to say that a person who doesn't go through that extra whatever you have to do to lose that extra pound versus someone who does go through that, you it does it does sap you. And how long lasting that effect is on that on that athlete's body is is up for question, but I would say that the 20% seems fair, but beyond that, like, what, what did we talk about earlier in the show? We were like, well, Kevin Lee, should this, lose, should this missing weight be held against him when it comes time for, uh, you know, who's going to be getting the, the next title fight or the next number one contender fight? We didn't, when we were talking about if, if McGregor wasn't available to Nurmagomedov, well, we were, talk, we were talking about Poirier. Well, Kevin Lee um, would be up in that conversation at some point, but it's almost like he loses a little bit of his of his shine off of his fight. So I so I mean I don't think he was in a position where that win was going to propel him into a title fight. I don't think he was quite there. But let's say that he was. Let's say that if, let's say that the Ferguson loss didn't happen and, and Kevin Lee was right there on the verge. Well, I think the lose, missing weight does kind of disqualify you, at least in my yeah, mind, yeah. from getting that immediate title fight. All right, uh, let's move along to our next one here. Okay, so this was a guy who was replying to Marco Mundi, but he said, I'm going to submit this early for the uh, MMA beat. Um, how many more times do you guys think Conor McGregor fights in the yeah. UFC? Uh, uh, by the way, Mark, in the reply, set the line at five Ooh. and said that he didn't think that it, it would be under. If the line was set at five, he was picking the under, I believe. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I remember reading that. Uh, so let's put so the... funny, man. When guys are on top... It always seems like they have a fight or two left. Yeah. You want to get, get them while you can. It's when they start to lose that suddenly this fighter wants to keep going. So it's always one of those situations you're like... His, his situation Anderson is very Anderson Silva was always on the verge right. Right. Yeah. of retiring, right? Like, we might be saying, and now, you know, once he loses, he's, he's picking up fights again. I'm, but he's not sitting on a pile of money. Like, that's like, true. Exactly. That situation. is true. So, but if, so if I set the number at five, is, would you take the in under the or the over? Yeah. 
I would take the under. That's an easy call yeah. taking the under wow. right time. He he fights less than five times. I, I, put, I put it at three max. You set the line at three. Yeah, you still take three. the under? Uh, yeah, that can be talked into. Push? Yeah, yeah, maybe. But it's three or less wow. for sure. Wow. At 29? Yeah. Holy yeah, smokes. Yeah, but 29, you know, richer than rich. Yeah, but that money For goes now. by fast. It's, less really, he it's a crazy it. thing to say that, like, he's set with $100 million. Again, like, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, these guys make $100 million in two that's, years. That's what he has now. Exactly. The next time he fights, he's going to make a lot more money. The next, I mean, he won't make Magre Mayweather money, I'm that's sure. It's going to last him his but, whole life. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. And, 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 and someone like Floyd, like, it's not absurd to think that he could be making $100 million or $50 million or $60 million for the next 10 years. Like, Floyd yeah. had a pretty good run of making, you know, uh, what is it, nine figures, and still continued to that's, fight. That's what he does. He's yeah, not, he's I, not I a Kardashian. I'm going to say more than five. He's not being rich. He's famous <coughs> for being a civilian fighter. There is a competitive nature to that. You know what I'm saying? I'm going like, to say, say over. Wow. Yeah. Over five? Yeah. Over three? Five. All right. <laughs> I, okay, I hope you're right. I mean, yeah. that'd be great, but I don't believe that. Okay, two left. Let's go to the second to last one. Here we go. Not sure if you'll be joined by Luke Thomas this week. We See, are, even, actually. Even this man is wow. skeptical. But I'm curious to hear his and the rest of the panel's thoughts on Kanye's latest outburst oh, no. oh, tweets Lord. regarding Trump and why other did you, political... Why did you pick this one? I don't know. <laughs> and why is he singling me out? Yeah, I don't know. It just seemed like a good why, question why is, to ask. I mean, we're on Twitter. Out? The guy's asking about tweets. Yeah. seemed like the perfect outlet. Um, you could you could you could plead the fifth if you'd like. No, I don't plead the fifth. I I don't really know what to think to be honest. Um, well, we talked about this last week, right? When my buddy and I went to a Kanye concert, and you asked me, "Oh, did you want to go?" And the answer was, "No, I didn't." But I did want to see Pusha T. I don't give a fuck about Kanye West. <laughs> okay. I don't like his music. He could endorse Obama. He could endorse Satan. He could endorse Trump. Yeah. He could endorse uh, my dad. I still don't give a fuck about his stupid opinions <laughs> on anything. And his music is super overrated. So sometimes there you I go. wish you had an opinion on these things. Well, it's just it like it's your, like, like Kanye. Road. What did what your did Kanye? Road. My timeline <laughs> is filled. Don't sit on the yeah. here, Luke. Come on. My timeline is filled with the river of inane shit yeah. coming out of his mouth that I have to. Just sit here and entertain. Like I don't care what he has to say. I mean, I don't care about his Twitter feed. I don't really yeah. like pay attention to his political views anyway. So yeah, I only know about it because other people are making a big deal of it. To be honest, and I kind of made a joke. Like even just typing his name feels like a polarizing thing to do at this point. But um, I blocked I, him. I, I could, I, you blocked him. Yeah. <laughs> Which by the way felt great. <laughs> by the way, it, it cracks me up when, when you block someone who doesn't follow you or no, you don't follow. I blocked them. him for one reason. So you don't for one reason. Yeah. Well, uh, two reasons. One was I was just tired of seeing people yeah. talk about it. That's my hilarious. thing was just I couldn't I couldn't There's take it anymore. Coming on Can you show me that? Yeah, after? because I follow a lot of writers for the Federalist, which is a very right wing publication, and they were all just like lathering themselves Lovely. up in yeah. it. And all the left wing people I was following were all they were all dismayed, <laughs> and I was just sick of the conversation. But there's another reason why I blocked him. Okay. A better reason. He only follows one person. Uh, if you do you? the bit, no, oh. Kim Kardashian. If you do the bit where you only follow zero or one, you don't get the follow. You deserve to die. You wow. deserve to Chelsea die. Chelsea and follows zero. Well, Chill's an exception. Okay. I like that. Yeah, I, I just noticed that recently. Uh, I, I don't. I don't follow uh, Kanye West, uh, but what I get. By the way, your boy Skip Bayless follows zero too, and you were praising him. Oh. That's, oh. that's 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 part of the show. Okay, that's, that's right. part of him to me. <laughs> I I don't follow the guy. I don't I don't pay attention to his music. But what I gather from reading some stuff online is that is that he uh, has a, a record coming out, or oh, is and that, that he has in the past. When he was just about to release something, came out with something else. I forgot what his other one was. There was another like big tweet that blew up on him. So I guess this is just you know PR. So right <laughs> now we are right now by having yes. this conversation, we are selling his records. And I'd like to just stop and I, doing and that. I, and I love. I don't want that to be the last thing I do on the MMB the to sell. You Kanye West records. I love the fact that you call it a record, by the way. Just yeah, yeah, isn't that great? For yeah, the I'm sure I love no, the fact. Those are the things that spin when yes. you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just happy that Meek Mill is free. Yeah, that's actually a bigger issue about uh, incarceration standards. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just shocked at how big of a story that was. Meek Mill or the, the Meek Mill one? I mean, that he's being flown from a from a helicopter to the yeah. basketball game. Well, he uh, had uh, Robert our, our, Kraft went to go see him. Our good friend Dave Schaller is opening the door. Of the arena, do you see that? It's Standing the there, best with, thing Dave Schaller's done with his, in his new life. haircut. <laughs> hey, I love you, buddy, but the haircut. I but, mean, really. Well, I, oh yeah, I saw him in Atlantic. Well, I didn't. I wasn't there, but he was. On, he was caged right next to Ratner. Yeah. What's up with his haircut? Oh, uh, well, it's up here. Oh, he it's grew just, his hair out. Yeah, it's just it's like no good. Either you got it or you don't. Man bun. You know? No, it's not a man bun. It's just a comb over. But it's. Oh, it's we, a comb what are you talking over? about? Uh, yeah. Dave Schaller. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
He has a cool shaved his head. I was trying to imagine what he looked like. Do you remember him? Oh, yeah, I remember yeah. him. Um, I remember him not answering my emails plenty yes. of times. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Did you say David, passive aggressive Schaller? I don't believe you. <laughs> yes. We miss you so much. Go Dave Sixers. Schaller. Yeah, Go Sixers. Sixers. Does this thing John Anik has to grow his hair out too? Uh, no, I think, but John Anik, I think, has that. My point is, if it's not there, you can't do the comb over. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> there have been there are some very high profile people with comb overs right now. I guess right I guess. down there in Washington. Okay, uh, last one, last but not least, Jeff, go out with this one. Oh, if the no. panelists had an MMA fighters draft, what would the first round picks look like? Taking into account talent, marketing, outside the cage issues, etc. Your first round pick, number one. First round pick. Is this like? You're starting an organization. You have the pick of the world. Come on, it's got to be current active fighters. You yes. take Conor McGregor out yeah, of the well, equation, right? I mean, you got to take it all into account. <laughs> I don't pick him first. Oh, yeah, see, well, I, I think the thing about McGregor, you know, he's the biggest star, but he's also could be the biggest pain in the ass. Yeah, you may not be right. able to deal with him. So, so I, I'm not sure that I would take him. And then, of course, the best fighter in the organization has been John Jones, but. He's a wild card too. So now we're starting to go down the list to, you know, get George. George. Hey, what's, what's the name of the, the the GM for the Giants? I don't know. Don't let's don't no, don't depress. The point me now. is, <laughs> the, the, he doesn't he doesn't go down the list. He makes a pick. You got to make a pick. I'm on. I'll go Saquon Barkley. That's my yeah, pick that's for the pick. pick one. No, for seriously. MMA? MMA pick. Who are you starting an organization with? Oof. Mm. Did you really think it was a football question? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a way to go oh, she's out. Like, he's like the guy with the racist uh, tweets, Josh Allen. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll, uh, I mean, the fighter who I, I, I'm, the fighter I want to see is I'm, I'm going with Mighty Mouse. He's not the biggest what? star of the organization. That's your but first pick? That's my guy. The, well, uh, this is, by the way, this is the perfect way for you to go Mighty, out. Mighty Mouse. <laughs> my man. He's number one, number one pound for pound. He's not a pain in the ass. He's a, he's a, he's a good guy. I'll, I'll take Mighty Mouse. How about okay. that? Yeah. God. I, don't I won't be, I will not make, as but, much money as but this is it. the this, other organization. This is why it's so but perfect. Because like, you've been but, the guy who has said, I don't watch Tough for the theatrics, I don't do this. You're picking the guy who doesn't sell pay-per-views, who, who admits himself. I'm picking the guy who, who, like, I would, when I get up in the morning, like, like I, you know, I was watching when, when McGregor did this whole thing <laughs> in Brooklyn, and, and I was looking at Dana White, and Dana White looked like he was going to have a coronary because, you know, this is one more thing of drama. And I'm thinking to myself, the guy's richer than, than, than dirt, but... Is it worth it to have to go through your life yeah. thinking about, you know, what McGregor is going to do, what John Jones is going to do? Why not? I, if the world were filled with with Demetrius Johnsons, yes. if the sport were filled with these guys, maybe it wouldn't have the kind of audience. But that's the kind of that's the world that I would want to. I win. love it. Okay? I love it, Chuck. And I'm out. It does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, if I'm going with a guy that I just you you like his attitude and you're building around, it would be Max Hall. Oh! Oh, you uh, bastard. Now I gotta pick second now. <laughs> God. <laughs> Fuck. You got the third pick in the draft, so you're taking Max. Yeah. Oh. I, just like, I like his attitude. And you want you want guys to be like that, right? So Down you're starting you're starting with the guy that you'd want to build the character. That's on. a good pick. That's All a good right. pick. So again, if it wasn't for character issues, who knows how, what kind of trouble McGregor's gonna get himself in. If John Jones could figure out what was going on, he, these guys would be easy picks. Right. I was gonna go Max Howell. <laughs> God, you son of a bitch. So I'll pick somebody, in a, a Habib is a good choice too, but I wonder how much longer he's got, plus he's had a lot of injuries. So I'm gonna go Kevin Lee. I'm gonna go Kevin wow, Lee, and I'm gonna nice. tell you why, I'm gonna tell you why. There are other good picks you could make, but I'm gonna pick him because he's 25 years old. He's young, and yeah. I think the upside there, just that was another yep, reason to pick yep. Max. Max is 26. Yeah, yeah. So like, those are the guys I was looking at somewhere in that time frame who are championship level material. That's where I would go. My second pick is yep. Rose Namajunas. Rose Namajunas, yeah. with, I, Wait, I, You're I, skipping me? I, I didn't get a chance to pick yet. And you you traded your pick. Yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> that, that is a good no, pick go as well. That pick. is a good pick. Uh, yeah, I'm letting all you jokers be on your high horse and, uh, high and, and, horse. and all that. Yeah. And I'm, of course I'm picking Here's Connor. Here's Jerry Jones. I'm picking Connor. 20, exactly. I'm, Jerry's pick, I'm Jones. selling tickets. Yeah. Uh, I don't, you know, dollies, all good. You know? Because you can deal with that stuff. I, I'm just thinking like, well, you got the first do pick, I want to so deal with, do I want to deal with this nonsense? I don't want to. But at four, I'll take the guy with the baggage. See, at four, it's a different pick. Exactly, 100%. That's why I was happy to say. One versus four, four, it's different. You, you've got a lot of pressure. You can't screw that one up. So you're going with the safe choice. I went with the guy that I would you went like with to Tim work Duncan. with. You went with Tim Duncan, <laughs> right? And that's a good They're pick. They're about hey, the similar. Hey, the, Bermuda, was it Bermuda or the, the, what island is he from? 
Virgin he, Islands. Virgin right? Islands, yeah. that's right, yeah. Yeah, you went with Tim Duncan. You, you went with Mr. Miles Reliable. Miles. Mr. Reliable goes with Mr. Reliable. That was a good question. It was a good question. Yeah, was, <laughs> of course, because the, the NFL draft right. is, is yeah. this evening, so good luck to all the teams that's picking tonight. tonight. Yeah. Jeff, again, it was a yeah. pleasure. Thank you very much. Hopefully we'll see you again in the future. This isn't yeah. goodbye forever. I'll be sending, you know those questions we just Yes. Read? Next week, I guarantee you that I will have a really good question for you, yeah. Jokers. We look forward to it. Uh, for now, we shall say goodbye for our crew. Thank you very much to, he to them, for uh, Luke, for Chuck, and one more time for the man in the shirt, Jeff Wagenheim. Uh, happy trails, my friend, and good luck to you on uh, the other side of the fence. We thank all of you for watching. Enjoy the fights this weekend, and of course, enjoy your weekend.